this chair next to me move and it it lifted up and went through me not over me but actually went through me and it happened so quickly and it blew and my hat blew off now like i picked up my hat and i'm looking at this chair that blew over me and my, i'm looking at my buddy and he's looking at me he was like bro that chair just went through you and i was like Welcome to the Create Happy Now podcast, dedicated to helping you start your journey to discover true happiness. Join me, your host, Susan Blanton, weekly as we explore the transformation stories and words of wisdom from our Masters of Happiness with tips you can start applying today to create happy now. Hey, this is Susan Blanton with the Create Happy Now podcast, and today I have on my show Sahat Botan and Rael Aizan, aka Ray Light. So welcome to the show. I am so glad to have both of you. And I am delighted to have the listeners hear all about you and your story. And I wanted to just introduce um, each of you, um, maybe kind of go one at a time to talk about your story and you know how you got to be where you are um so why don't you um uh Sahat, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and then um ray you can tell me a little bit about yourself and then both of you can kind of go into your story awesome so i do kundalini reiki i'm a kundalini reiki master and i also tap into source healing and Essentially, I take all the the things that I've learned spiritually and create a class that assists people in balancing their life and in every aspect on the mind, body, and spirit, because it's all about the, the integration. You know, you can change your diet and, and fix that, but you still got to work on your chakras. You can, you know focus on meditation, but you still got to focus on your diet as well. So I show people how to integrate all those into their everyday routine, their plasmatic routine. Do you also show them how to get started? Because some people might have just heard what you said and go, what's a chakra? And that's kind of where I come in, actually. Oh, nice. (laughs) Nice. So uh, we make a really great team. So everyone, hey, I'm Rayella. Everyone calls me Ray. Um, And I am kind of like the trans, I I help you with the transition from one foot in the matrix to one foot in the Milky Way. And we kind of like transition that because we're all spiritual beings having Mm -hmm. a human experience. Exactly. So I help people with that mindset of learning how to transition their mind from just like being that robotic like matrix bot type energy into like stepping into your full spirituality so i'm also a reiki master as well i um help people with their chakras i have an online course that helps people go through their chakras unblock them and also release any past traumas that might be holding them back and creating resistance in their energy field and then i teach them about how to utilize and manipulate energies to their benefit so we work hand in hand and uh, that's kind of like, we were on our own journey when we met and yeah. then we were like, oh my gosh, let's put this together. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So basically you are kind of helping the person who's just kind of wanting a change and you're just kind of bringing them into this, this idea of um, how you can balance yourself and take care of your your, you know, yourself. Cause I mean, basically our, our mind, body, and spirit is the only thing we're going to have from birth to death, right? Mm-hmm. Um, everything else on the outside is going to change. So, and it's not selfish mm-hmm. to take care of your mind and your body and, and your soul. Um, and I think a lot of people are brought up that it's selfish or vain to, to do that. And so basically, Ray, you're introducing them into this idea and then how to do it. And then, uh, Sahat, you're kind of really fine toning and letting them go even deeper into, um, 
mastering uh balancing your your mind body and spirit exactly yeah. our our programs are actually centered on self mastery so like i specialize in mindset um i'm a student right now of nlp which is neuro linguistic programming mm -hmm. basically reshaping the way that you've received information and the meaning you've attached to it into a way that's going to benefit you and not in a way that you're being manipulated by your surroundings. Right. And so that's the mindset, right? Learning how to gain control over your mind. And then Sahat is actually a um, so I focus, holistic. Yeah, I do the uh, natural health consulting. Mm -hmm. And then I incorporate that with the, uh, the, the chakra balancing with the synchrogalactic yoga. So we can go right into that with the synchrogalactic yoga because um, that's actually the scientific process of going into each one of your chakras because each one of your chakras is connected to a specific point in your in the rest of your body in your mind and you have these mental spheres and these mental spheres connect you to different parts of your other your other beings and these other spheres these other dimensions and so you're also able to connect to the cosmos. So it's connecting us to the rhythm of the cosmos so that we can balance our etheric bodies with our physical bodies because mm -hmm. all of it is energy. And so we're unifying everything and alchemizing the things that were not needed from like past traumas, uh, things in this lifetime and previous lifetimes, we're going deep into the Akash, the DNA, healing your DNA. And we're working on programming. every aspect of, of the of the being of the body so that you can unify like every aspect of your of your being into one. So what maybe the listeners might want to call like, so maybe if someone is familiar with acupuncture or reflexology, this is just a bigger picture of deeper spiritual alignment um, mm -hmm. that maybe reflexology does. It's it's. Can you go into an explanation of what what the chakras are and and how they relate to your health and your well being and your and your sp spiritual you know health. Absolutely. Yes, I love that question. So the chakras are energy generating points that exist in our physical body. Now we do have other chakras that are in our etheric bodies, but let's just focus on the first seven, the main seven that go up from the root that is at the base of the spine all the way up to the crown. That's like right above your head. Mm -hmm. So these main seven points are drawing energy from the galactic center, the galactic or the galactic source. The galactic source is where all energy exists and comes from. So this energy is flowing from the galactic source through our sun. And so we see this, this energy effect through the aurora borealis. And this is where the northern lights, you see that energy display in the sky. That same energy that's flowing into the, that, that causes that is actually flowing into the chakras of the planet. And so you're able to see the, the aura of the planet. And so we have that same energy as above, so below. So that same energy from the sun, these electronic lines of force that make up our chakras, this plasma is what makes up these different aspects of our being that connects us to other dimensions that connects us to the different lifetimes that we've had that connects us to the cosmos that allows us to manifest the things that we create through thought into the physical reality because everything around us has been created through thought this this television this computer that we're talking through our phones everything was created from a thought and, and mm -hmm. formed into the physical somehow. So, mm -hmm. and kind of in lamest terms, so like for people, let's say, who are a little newer and are not familiar with this at all, each one of these seven energy centers represents something different. So, like, let's just take one, for example, I'm not going to go through all seven of them, but your root chakra, that is representation of like your foundation or let's say your traumas, right? So, if you, let's think, 
I love to use this example. If you have like a water hose and yeah. you know, you're watering the flowers, right? But you take that hose, you fold it in half and you kink it up. What happens to the flow? It stops. It stops, right? It might, you might get a little trickle, but the same thing happens in your energy field. So we come into these physical bodies to learn how to manipulate energies and the outside world often has a way of like kinking up our hose. So if your <laughs> yeah. hose is kinked up, you got to get those obstructions out of the way in order for the energy to flow freely. That's how you learn how to manifest. So what we do is we teach people how to unkink your hose. Yes. Well, and you can also get <clears throat> it kinked up, not just from say this lifetime, but uh, maybe people... I guess call it karma mm -hmm. or, you know, past lives, things that you have experienced um, before, which is still in your DNA, right? Somehow yes. it's picked up. Yeah. in your DNA, which that's a whole nother show, right? <laughs> oh, and we can and we're, we're prepared. Yeah, we can, we can <laughs> you make know. that a whole nother show. Definitely. Yes, right. Um, but, you know, I understand that it's a little easier now to drop your karma, but yes. you can, um, you can at least, um, have your Akashic record read and, and help some of the healing there. Um, and, and that can definitely get rid of some things that maybe you're like, I've got blockages, but I'm, I can't recall anything that would have blocked it. I don't know how many traumas. Well, what about before um you know before you came to this lifetime that you might have had a trauma before like you know maybe in a past life i was a warrior and so you know maybe there was some trauma there or i had a horrific death in a past life that is affecting me this life but i don't know how to get over it because i have nothing to talk about mm -hmm. yeah you can definitely get your akash red or Sahat also teaches dream sewing. There's a lot that happens in the dream state that you bring energies from the dream state into the physical and you don't even really know because you don't remember your dreams, you don't keep track of your dreams, stuff like that. So do you want to kind so, of tell them about that? So when you, when we're in the waking state, our energy is, where our personality is located in our tonal, which is in our crown chakra. Uh, the energy that we manifest when we go into that daydream or when we actually go into the dream state is in our nawal, which is our solar plexus, which is actually, I know they talk about our solar plexus being at the, the bottom of the rear cage, um, but in um, ancient Mexica, uh, ancient Mexico, they talk about the the navel being the um, the Noel, the solar plexus, and this is connected to the to the moon, and that's where Mexico actually gets its name, the the navel of the moon. Really, wow! Yeah. And I didn't so, know that. <laughs> and so, uh, this energy when we go into the dream state, it actually switches. So our Noel goes where our Tanal is, and then our our personality goes down here. We don't remember our dreams because they're not connected. And so through dream sewing, you go into an altered state of consciousness where you implant exactly your direct, your specific intention that you want to create in the dream state. Because through the dream state, this is when you're connecting with the spiritual world and you can actually manifest what you want through the dream state. So a lot of times we go through the dream state through this unconscious energy because we're co we're connecting with the co collective unconscious energy and when it's, when you go through it kind of happens things you're like oh i didn't remember my dreams or you might have a bad dream and that's a whole nother thing because there are negative energies in the the astral planes that feed off of mm -hmm. chaos and energy so say you have a dream where you're going you're driving a car you get into an accident and you 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 experience some kind of trauma. You feel some kind of way, even when you 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 pull yourself out into the waking state. So these these negative spirits will hide themselves in very tricky places, like the the trunk of the car or the glove compartment. And that's where they feed off of that energy, that fear, that terror, things like that. 
So when you when you bring awareness to these things, you can actually cancel out the negative dreams. And so you use this purifying fire to burn that out so you can manifest the things that you want into the physical life and not unconscious energy to be like, why did this so-called random thing happen in my life? Well, these things are happening in the dream state. We're bringing that into the physical. Mm -hmm. And to go back to what you were saying, Susan, like when it comes to like tapping into your Akash and you're not knowing like what's going on in your Akashic record or what happened or transpired in your, in your past lives, you can utilize some of the dream warriors, some of the tools in dream sewing to heal that past and heal that lineage. And what's amazing now too, is now that we're in this new energetic space physically, like where our universe is in, in the cosmos, right. um, we're able to utilize our consciousness to do a lot of the healing. So with intention and with healing yourself in this lifetime, it actually predates a lot of past life traumas as well. And you're able to heal those too. Mm -hmm. So in this new energy, we're able to tap consciously with pure intention into this quantum energy. And so through the dream state, through everything, because it's all connected through the dream state, through the spirit world, when you're meditating, you're going through these altered states of consciousness, you're going into these certain frequencies, you're accessing certain dimensions. And so when you bring awareness to it, you can do it with pure intention and bring the things manifest what you want in life, such as healing, such as abundance and, and prosperity, which let's talk about abundance shortly it's not just the the wealth behind it but it's the abundance of of life of longevity the abundance of family and loved ones the abundance of not having to need anything in life all of your life uh all your, your needs life, are met yeah mm -hmm. right exactly and and now i have heard about lucid dreaming and now is that what you're talking about where you can start learning how to control your control your dreams yes yeah, um, so through these altered states of consciousness you're able to control your dreams you're, at, you're actually able to lucid dream and then from there once you start to able to control your dreams you can astral project and go into other dimensions so if anybody has seen the most recent dr strange movie that movie relates to me because I go into these other dimensions and they're all different. There's all these different beings and I'm helping them in different ways. And I'm connecting with people in this realm and mm -hmm. I'm putting together, like say when we're putting together an event, I am connecting with the people that I want to connect with regardless of how I feel in a physical with these, like when a limiting beliefs, like, should I invite this person? Like this person is pretty high up. Like, no, invite this person because we're going to connect in the dream state and we're going to connect on a spiritual level. And then when I shoot my shot and send my email or connect with them in however kind of way, we're going to make that connection. <laughs> and so I, I've done this for, for years and I love it. So I show others how to tap into it. What's crazy is he just did this. So his solar return, his birthday was uh, December 15th. And Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> On his birthday, um, so he had we call it shootyourshot.com. He had... <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> he went to go shoot his shot a couple days before his birthday. And I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. B Serious, and it's serious spelled like like the serious like the, like like the, the yeah. Okay. Yeah, S I R I U S. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so Dr. B. Sirius, who is pretty huge in the consciousness world and industry, um, like a celebrity type name, um, he just randomly reached out to him and he called us back, like on the phone. And we had an amazing conversation with him. We were cutting up for like 40 minutes. And like he agreed to find, like he, by the end of the conversation, he agreed to present at our spiritual retreat that we're hosting in May. So it's just like these principles work and we have proof of like things that have happened in our lives and in our clients' lives of how you can actually bring some of these things, like these fantastical ideas into the physical and make it real. Absolutely. And, and it's a, really what it ends up being is you have to have that connection 
here to you, you and yourself, right? Yep. Me, myself, and I, um, <laughs> and, and love, love it first. You know, you have to learn to love yourself and realize that it, you're more than just your physical body here. Mm -hmm. You are part of source, right? You are um, so much more magnificent than you've ever given yourself credit for. And, and we have superhuman powers that we don't even know we have or know how to execute them or, or even experience them. And, but you guys do, you have that way to introduce that, that superhuman power that is phenomenal to experience. And then that just opens up the world to you. Right. Yeah, it definitely. And, and the awesome thing about it is that we all have these abilities, no matter what belief you may have, I don't care what you're, what, what. So when I, when I, when I talk about limiting beliefs, I'm talking about like what you consider like your race, your social status, wherever you came from, your Even environment, your background, all like of it. What like, happened to you? It doesn't matter because you chose to be where you're at. And not only that, but your soul on a spiritual level is mm -hmm. pure and made in the image of source. Yes. Are a piece of source. So you are magnificent, divine, and perfect on a spiritual level. The only thing you're experiencing is an imperfect human experience. And I know like people listening are probably like, okay, like that sounds great or whatever, but this can be scientifically proven. Like your DNA, um, Billy Carson talks about this all the time. He'll show you a picture of the flower of life and inside the flower of life, you can see the, the patterning of a strand of DNA. Mm -hmm. And he explains how the flower of life is the frequency of God. Mm -hmm. And so because your DNA is a portion and a part of the flower of life, that also exists within you. So um, a lot of people like blame like their dis-ease on genetics and really it's epigenetics because you're able to reprogram your own DNA and call for and pull on the things that are actually going to propel you and move you forward. But you're absolutely right, Susan. It starts with self-love. Mm -hmm. Like that's the first step. First, you have to forgive yourself for yes. all of the guilt, the shame, the lower vibrational frequencies that you're carrying around, anger, rage, jealousy, envy, things like that. Release all of that because all, all that means, all that is a reflection of you not loving yourself enough or you not feeling worthy enough to pour back into self. And usually the reason why you don't feel that way is because you don't know who you really are. Mm -hmm. And once you go, oh, I am a, you know, I, I am a divine being just having a human experience for a hot minute in, in this little human suit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a subtle game. It it's is. like, what do you like? infinite infinite beings decide to do like let's create the simulation where we put on a vr system and we just go around and play around for a little minute and let's like forget who we are <laughs> let's forget who we are it's right. like the best game ever right, right. it's like it's like survivor except you know the and people are watching <laughs> you know the 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 show and um but you don't forget who you are you know <laughs> but um but it's it is like survivor you know, I mean, you're, you're coming down here and, and being in a limited environment and trying to search a way back and, and with free will to who you really are and, and the relationship of back to that. And once you've got that all connected, then it's a, it's a fun ride. Yes. And you know what? I'm so glad you used the example of Survivor because I feel like so many people, especially like everyone's like, oh my God, the R word, right? This recession's coming up. Like, first of all, chill. Like, <laughs> first of all, calm down. Second of all, like you, when you're, okay, a lot of people are living in survival mode, but the whole game, the whole purpose is to know up here, it doesn't matter what's going on outside. I create what happens outside based on what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting here thinking like, oh my God, I'm so scared of the recession. 
then guess what's going to happen? You're going to suffer from the recession. But if you're like, oh my gosh, this will be a great investment opportunity that prices are going to go down and the markets are going to crash and that'll be the perfect time to purchase, then you'll go in with a different mindset and you'll win. And I know a lot of wealthy people who are like, oh yeah, the 2008 recession or oh yeah, coronavirus. Like I made the most money of my life during these moments where people were suffering. And buying and toilet paper. <laughs> Listen, I was living in Vegas during that and I will never forget how Vegas acted. How America acted over toilet paper in 2020. I'm people still don't know. Like, where did it go? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, okay, the world's ending. The first thing you do is get toilet paper. <laughs> like, if somebody knows something that, I mean, it's all over the world. Like, you know, it, it, it was a weird phenomena. Um, but, you know, it's it's funny. It's like, it's more of when you get to this point, you're just kind of watching the show, mm-hmm. you know. What are the um, today? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see. What's everybody believing this time? You know. Um, have you yeah. Turned, have you tuned into ER today? <laughs> <laughs> so tell us how you got to where you are. Um, uh, let's let's hear that that juicy story or okay who wants to start first <laughs> <laughs> all right so um I'm gonna sum this up the best I can because your girl's been through a lot of traumas um my parents divorced when I was very young and my first memory in life was I was two years old and we were living in this little town called Riverdale in like a suburb area of Chicago and um it was the middle of the night and I woke up to a bang through the door and I didn't know what it was and I was scared. I stayed in my room for a minute. I heard some rustling around. Then all of a sudden I heard a commotion going on in my mom's room. So I got up from my bed and I looked out of the window or out of the bedroom door and I saw the front door was kicked open and I was like freaked out. And so I waddled to my mom's room and I looked around the door and there was my dad towering over my mom. The blinds ripped off the wall. The bed was in shambles. My mom's on the bed bleeding from her elbow. The blinds were kind of like hanging off the bed. It was just a wreck in there. And I didn't know what to do because I was a daddy's girl. So I was like terrified. And so I just like put myself in between them and my mom's behind me and my dad's in front of me. And at that moment, and um, by the way, my birth name is Tynika. And my whole my whole life, everyone's called me Tiny. There's a point to this. Okay. So um, <laughs> we'll circle back to that part. So my whole life, everyone's called me Tiny. And so in that moment, I'm standing between my dad and my mom. And I'm just like frozen. And my dad's like, Tiny, move. And like his voice like rattled the room. And he's like, Listen, 6'5", 350 pounds, like this man played football most of his life, wrestling most of his life, like big dude. And here I am, little two-year-old me, frozen, like, no, you're not going to hurt my mom, you know, (laughs) like I can really speak, but I was just, I remember this so vividly. And, you know, this memory kind of like haunted my dreams for like years. Um, And so I froze and he says again, tiny, move. And I just like, shh stood there shaking my head I don't recall what happened next my mom kind of fills in the story says he took a couple steps and like backhanded me and I hit the wall and passed out and didn't wake up till the EMTs came so that was the first memory that I've had in life there's so much trauma in that memory and and that caused me to grow up with that lack of self-worth without like self-love and looking to please other people and looking for the approval of different men. And, you know, that began to bleed into my relationships. Mm -hmm. And so I was like involved in like two different abusive relationships. One where the guy um, actually pulled an extension cord out on me and we literally fought until there was like holes in the wall, doors ripped down in the house. It was a mess. He like had so much mental control over me that he convinced me to even sell my body for him, you know, and give him the money. And it was just, it was, I was completely broken down. And in that space, I knew that I was not happy and that I needed to figure something out. I didn't know where to go or what to do. And I started listening to Cryon and Abraham Hicks. And so these positive audios, right, kind of got me in a, in a momentum. So I started to learn how to meditate. And this was, 
I would say probably 2016, 2017, I'm living in Las Vegas and I was at home meditating. And then in the middle of my meditation, I heard the door open and I knew it was my ex at the time. And he comes in and my heart just starts racing. And that was the sign for me, like, this is not the life I need to be living. Like I'm trying to meditate and literally just his presence gets me afraid even just to be in my own bedroom door closed. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. so I knew that I needed to change. Um, I ended up moving out and in that space, like I had like $500 to my name and I was just like, he went to California for a couple of days and I just like moved out while he was in California and um, made it work. And I was like, okay, I'm going to start my own business. I had a wish, a dream and a couple bucks and that was it. And so I, a couple months later, tried to start my own business and lost everything. Like I was a victim of fraud. Uh, This kid ended up crashing into the back of my car and like totaled my vehicle. Um, And then I was like getting eviction notices every week on my door. It was just like, everything was crumbling around me. And so my dad and I, we had a pretty strained relationship and I, you can assume why, um, I, I decided to call him. And so I called my dad. I was like, Hey dad, I really need some help. Like I'm struggling right now. Like, you know, all this stuff's going on. I'm about to get kicked out of my apartment. And he's like, I'm too busy right now with your brother's baseball tournament in St. Louis. He lives in Chicago. You go, you going down to St. Louis So this is a luxury trip, you know what I mean? And you can't help me like save my apartment. Like I'm about to be homeless halfway across the country. And so I remember in that moment, like being so mad at him, like I was so mad, but I think I needed that lesson to realize that, you know, I felt like I was taking like one step forward and two steps back in life. And if I needed to learn how to walk forward, I needed to learn how to put one foot in front of the other you know, and I could not push the responsibility on someone else who I felt owed me something, Yeah, you know, like he didn't owe me anything. And and honestly, in him telling me, no, it taught me how to fend for myself. If I was, if I, I was looking for a superhero, I was looking for someone to come save me. And that person was me. Mm -hmm. So then I started changing my habits. I started changing my behaviors. I ended up getting two jobs. I had to take like the bus two hours each way. Um, so on the bus and I like had to be at work at like 7 a.m. So I'm on the bus at five and I would start meditating on the bus and I started journaling and listening to this positive audio and like reconditioning my mind to think and believe that I am worth it, that I am worthy. And so I want to say it took about like six or seven months. I ended up in a new car. I ended up going on a cleanse and going vegan and I ended up um, getting a new apartment and getting promoted at my job. I started off as like a hostess at Denny's and then I like got promoted to like a food runner and then I was like a server and then a a hourly manager all in like nine months. And then I was promoted again to a salary manager like two or three months after that. And so all of this was built from momentum and belief and Mm -hmm changing my habits. And so that kind of domino affected in um, 2020 when the world shut down, I was no longer working at Denny's and I was just like, okay, like there's something that I have a story to tell and there's something that I need to do in order to get it out. And that's kind of how collective consciousness came about. I I created these amazing routines. I call it the million dollar routine. Mm -hmm. Um, I created these amazing routines and rituals for myself to create balance, no matter what was going on in the outside world. So while people were like struggling and freaking out, I went out and bought a new car during 2020, during, during mid shutdown, like mid shutdown. I'm like, I'm going to go get a new car. Like (laughs) it doesn't matter what's going on in your outside world. If you know how to control the inside. And so in that moment, I realized like you have gold and the world needs to know about it. Mm-hmm. in a nutshell my story <laughs> nice yes <laughs> yeah and the thing is is like you know when when you I'm sure you saw that the thought patterns that you had growing up continued and that's why you were attracting those same types of relationships but when you were able to break that pattern with your 
thought processes, then you had a huge paradigm shift and your life started to, you were starting to create your life. Absolutely. Instead of react to it. Tony Robbins says all the time that life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. Mm -hmm. So all of those challenges, all of those adverse moments, all of the struggles, even your rock bottom moments are made to create opportunities for who you are to become, you know, and, and it's all about your focus, whatever you focus on, where focus goes, energy flows, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever you focus on, if you focus on the lack, if you focus on the misery, if you focus on like struggle, the struggle, you bring more of that. But if you're like, okay, something has to give and you focus on the outcome that you want and you begin working towards it, like the universe opens up for you. Yeah. I mean, basically whatever you think about, you bring about, I mean, if you're talking about your struggle, oh, you know, life is so hard for me. Well, guess what? You're going to get more of. That's your purchase order. Exactly. Um, <laughs> And, you know, I think a lot of times people are afraid to share how well things are going for them because people are just like, oh, well, you know, you're bragging, but you, you've got to do what's best for you. If you're excited about your life, shout it off the rooftops and don't care because the people who do care will go, I want, well, I want what she's having, or I want what he's having. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and maybe the ones that think you're bragging will finally come around but um and if they don't oh well (laughs) (laughs) right yeah uh so Sahat tell us a little bit about uh your journey so my spiritual journey started very young um I remember things at a very young age like I remember the first time I was like two months old and I met by my uncle and my aunt and I remember falling down the stairs two months old yeah, like I remember like some um some very like young things, like things that happened in my childhood. Um, so I don't know if it was because I fell down a flight of stairs and split my head open or or what, but uh it I just your memory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he got up laughing. You should hear his mom tell the story. Like Yeah, so like I fell down a flight of stairs and um I was, my head was split open and my mom came running up the stairs because she was in a basement doing laundry and she heard the commotion and I was just laughing. She was just scared because like I'm bleeding, blood's rushing down my face. You were like, that was fun. Right. And I was like, I'm not hurt. Like I'm, I'm a baby. I'm invincible. I'm okay. (laughs) Right. So she, she always says, I knew you, I knew your butt was weird since then. Um, (laughs) So, I, I have a very early childhood memory too. I mean, I remember being in my crib and I remember, uh, you know, ha- having my diaper change and I was, you know, probably two and I probably was potty trained, but I, my, my mother was like, how do you, how do you describe your room? Because it wasn't like that, you know, for very long. And cause she moved me. And I said, yeah, my crib was in this room and the window was right here and it had these kind of curtains and, you know, I could see this and I could see that. I could totally describe it. And she's like, how did you know? Because we never told you and we moved you out of there and and then moved you into your sister's room. And so I'm like, I don't know. I just remember. But um, yeah, yeah. So keep going. So uh, at a young age, like, one, two years old, I would, I remember looking out the window and seeing spirits outside. And I would tell people like my grandmother, cause I was living with my grandmother at the time. And she was just like, oh, that's just your imagination. So I just kept a lot of that stuff to myself. So I went through, like I grew up and I kept seeing the spirits and I was reading, I started off reading comic books, like around five years old. And I would always go to the bookstore. And one time I went and saw the esoteric well the new age section and uh i was reading i was like oh so like the stuff in the x-men comics is real because they're talking about esp and telepathy and so it all just made sense to me that like whatever they was writing in the comic books they were pulling the truth from like these new age books so it made me look at life a lot differently and i knew at a young age that like the the dream state was more real than the physical it was like 
I felt like I was in the Truman Show, and then the movie came out, and I was like, okay, this is weird. Like this is the starting- Matrix. I bet blew your mind. It did. Like it went. <laughs> it was like when I, I I grew up seeing these movies. I'm like, okay, this is how I feel. Like what what is going on here? Like am I on a movie? Is this is this is this my show? Like I I didn't know what was going. I just knew like what was what I was being told was not accurate. Was not factual like there was something else to this reality uh that we call uh the third dimension Mm -hmm. and so uh I grew up and and had these very esoteric experiences uh when I was 11 uh we were in Michigan and we were playing hide and go seek at night when it was actually safe to do that at night (laughs) And like the whole neighborhood was was out. We was just all playing. And one of my neighbors was doing like a ritual in his backyard. He's the same age as me. He was like, I saw this in a magic book and I'm doing this ritual. So I joined him and um, he created the circle around him. And I stepped in the circle, but then I stepped out in the middle of his incantation. And he was like, you shouldn't have did that. And then this weird wind, like this eerie wind blew but like none of the leaves on the trees blew or anything like the grass didn't move or anything. And so I saw he, his house was on the corner and there was a street light on, on the corner. And out of that, the radius of the light, there were these three shadow beams that appeared out of like, just the, out of nowhere, out of the ground. And one of them looked just like me and it, it ran up to me and hit me. And I mean, it hit me to where like, I actually fell back on my butt and I was, like shook, like what the heck just happened? And for a couple of years, I kept seeing the same shadow being and it would follow me around, but something in my spirit, whenever I would see him at night and I would be walking to like one of my friend's house, it would mimic me. So like I would stop, it would stop. I would take a step back, it'd take a step back. But like something in my spirit just told me to run after it. And every time I ran after it, it would run away and it would disappear. So I I kept having these kind of experiences. Oh, the lights. Oh, so I'm walking to um my my buddy's house, my 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 star brother's house, and now, at the time I didn't know, but his family was going through a crazy spiritual experience where the mom's husband was his his ex wife was a a bruja that was doing magic and had put some kind of uh spell some kind of curse on them and like the house was like basically the amityville horror house the father was he was going through this these episodes and not i'm not i'm not seeing all of this i'm seeing some of it i'm like your your stepdad is really strange he would watch uh the the empire strikes back and i mean like from front to back like the movie from front to back he would play it on his vcr in the attic for hours and just come down like dripping in sweat and then he would go down in the basement and just start chopping wood and then it was like I'm like yo your stepdad is really weird so (laughs) when I go when I'm going to his house because I'm experiencing this this shadow person like banging on my windows now banging on my windows and I'm on the top floor of my house I don't have any trees it was very disturbing at night I'm like I called him up and I'm like, bro, ask your mom, can I please stay tonight? And she was like, well, we're about to go out of town. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, I'll I'll walk over there. Just, is it okay? And she was like, yeah, that's fine. Like, you're always welcome. So I'm walking over there and there's like a long stretch of country road in in Michigan because I'm in New Buffalo at the time. And the stretch of road, every time I walk into the radius of a street light, the light goes off. And as I walk to the next one, that one goes off. The previous one comes on. This happens for like a mile down this road. And I'm like, oh, man, I ain't got no cell phone because cell phones didn't exist at that time. I'm just, like, <laughs> I'm just by myself in the dark, like, oh, my goodness, spirit, you angel, the somebody. coming out like, to you. The lights are going the out. The people are chasing me. I'm like, why is this happening to me? So I get over there. I'm telling I, I'm finally relieved and I'm telling my my star brother about this and he's like what like you're seeing this shadow person and he's I'm like look man it's outside so I, sh- I get him to look outside he finally looks outside and sees this being standing in his backyard he's living a he life he saw it too. he saw it too everybody who I told it I told about this being like they saw it 
So it wasn't just, I saw it. It were several that beings. That kind of helps. I mean, a little bit. <laughs> it, 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 it did help because I'm, I was walking with one of my friends and he saw it at night. He freaked out. I'm like, it's okay. I'm going to run after it. He's going to disappear. And I'm like, shoot, I'm over here being brave. Like I'm over here scared, but my spirit is like, <laughs> I got you. Like, I got you, man. I got you. And it, and it, it it's like, now that part is where that protector comes out. It's like, if I have somebody else to like, to worry about, it's like, I'm gonna protect you. Like, I, I ain't gonna let none out, nothing happen to you. So I go over to my buddy's house. I tell him, I was like, okay, look, as long as we put like a barrier of light around us, it can't bother us. Mm -hmm. And so he was dealing with his own spiritual stuff. And so we hear him banging on the, like banging all across the house. The house is shaking, like there's an earthquake. His, his brother's in his own room, in his own world. I don't know how he did not feel any of this, know any of this was happening. There was a, a he had a boom box, one of those turn, um, turn um, uh, dials. Turn tape? Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you get the, uh, you have to switch through the channels. You have to turn a knob. Yeah. And um, the knob stops, starts to turn all by itself, all the way to like, oh, asking 108.0, whatever, like the end where it's just static. And then we hear like this unearthly, like this, it, it, it wasn't a human noise. It was like, like something like crazy. I was like, it wasn't, oh, it, it, it wasn't like, talking. It was more of growling or something. It was, it was like growling guttural. It was, it was, it was, it was like an etherical screech. Oh. And um, we just barricaded ourselves in in the in the closet, and we just prayed, and we just stood there until like everything died down. And I think we actually fell asleep in there, and then we woke up the next morning. It was like it was like five six o'clock, and I was like, "Is it safe to come out? Like I don't hear anything." So in that in that space, I learned how to uh, protect myself more, and uh, I started with like talismans. Like I, I was carrying around this talisman to. Uh, absorb negative energy around me if there was negative spirits around me it would absorb that energy mm -hmm. and then it got to the point where I was learning how to apply this stuff like I wanted to not so much like I was learning about magic but I didn't want to do magic I just wanted to learn about it because like the earth babe earth babe magic mixing stuff together it was like that's cool, but if I could do psychic stuff and just will it into manifestation, I'd rather do that instead of mixing some stuff. I'll, I did have that knowledge and I use that to help people, but I use more of the spiritual uh, based stuff over the, the the magic stuff. And it's like kind of like in the same realm. Um, but, you know, so, dealing so with like a you, higher level. Why do you suppose that you had more of this experience? of uh, this negative uh shadow um appar apparition um or whatever that. you want to call it like <laughs> and so, i mean like because not everybody has these experiences some do and, and you're one of the lucky ones <laughs> but um <laughs> so how did how is do you think it's because you're more sensitive or um, do you think it could be, uh, something in past life that's related to it? Um, so how did you resolve this experience that you kept, how, you know, how did you get rid of it or did you, or you just were able to control it? So yes. And yes, it was, uh, it, it, it's spiritual and, um, I did get rid of it. And it took me, it, it took me from moving from, um, from Michigan to, to back to Indiana. I was living in Chesterton at the time and I was telling somebody about it. And that was the last of the strangest of those moments dealing with that shadow person I dealt with. Now I'm, I'm sitting there talking to him in my backyard. It's at nighttime and we're just sitting in some lawn chairs and there's three lawn chairs, but there's two of us sitting there and the other lawn chairs sitting in front of me. And as I tell him, I was like, hey, there's a shadow person right there. They're on that garage and the car shined the light, just happened to be passing by and shined the light on it. And it just saw like this shadow like posted up against and it was like moving around like, oh, you can see me. And then that eerie wind came and moved. None of the trees, none of the branches, none of the grass moved, but this chair next to me moved. And it it 
lifted up and went through me, not over me, but actually went through me. And it happened so quickly and it blew and my hat blew off. Now, like I picked up my hat and I'm looking at this chair that blew over me and my, I'm looking at my buddy and he's looking at me. He was like, bro, that chair just went through you. And I was like, what just happened? Now I've had like some strange experience where I'm talking on the phone and you know, I was talking to my, my, my girlfriend at the time and like in high school and all of a sudden I'm, I'm, my mind is like elsewhere. Like I've literally teleported to my grandmother's house, 200 miles away, like in another state. And I'm just like levitating like a couple of inches above the ground. And I'm, and I can still hear the conversation, but I'm like, how did I get here? So I've had a lot of those strange experiences. So with the the shadow people, the reason I feel like that was happening is because, yes, tied to past lifetimes. And then also uh, there were some things that were revealed from spirit about, you know, me being an ascended master and the and the things that I've, I've done in a previous lifetime. Mm -hmm. Well, previous lifetimes where I've, I've lived that um, that life and I've always done what I'm doing in this lifetime where I'm sharing the knowledge and, and wanting to, to help empower people as much and, and positively impact them as, as much as I can. And, um, you know, just being that, that beacon of light, I felt like those negative spirits knew that I was tapped in at a young age. And, and for one, they were like, mm, he's going to be good to feed on. And they wanted to feed off of that. And I noticed that, uh, prior to like 2000, because I was going through that, that era around there, it was like during that harmonic convergence, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, where a lot of that died down. I, I was really like starting to, to, to hone my abilities and I was tapping in and, uh, I was really strong with the visions. I was always having these visions that, that came true. 9-11, I saw that before it happened. And really? The, the war in Iraq, I saw that before it happened. Um, Tell us a little bit about that, because I'm sure that that would be very intriguing to <laughs> hear about. So how did how did you foresee the the 9-11? Okay, so <laughs> now this is my personal experience. I don't recommend this to anybody else. So I was at my buddy's house. We were smoking some very premium marijuana. Okay. It was it was. It was it was some next level stuff. It wasn't laced or anything, but it was some of that good stuff. And so we were watching a Kung Fu movie and we both passed out smoking. And as I passed out, I remember having this vision of these two towers just collapsing and thousands of people dying. Now, I didn't see a plane. I didn't see any of that. I just saw these buildings collapsing, like almost like- um, Disintegrating down. Like, like, like uh, planned uh, demolition. Yeah, like, right when you want to uh, demolish a building, it looked like that. And I just remember this, this number popped up and thousands of people had died. And I was like, bro, like what just happened? Like, and he was like, what? I was like, oh shoot. I thought I was in New York. Like whew, these buildings just collapsed. He was like, what? This was nine, 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 ten. 10. Uh, I'm in my room and I'm chilling by myself. And the, the blanket, the, the the pattern on the blanket started to shift. And I'm like, what's happening right now? Am I tripping? And now I'm sober. And the the I had a uh, a, a dial clock and the, the clock just stopped. Like it stopped blinking. It started blinking slower and slower. And then it just stopped. And then I just felt myself like, like if I'm sitting on the center of my bed and I'm sitting on the blanket, I felt myself fall and the blanket just like like I just went into like another dimension like you fell through, through my, the bed. Through my bed like I fell through my bed I'm falling into this uh this dimension where there is it looks so vast like I'm falling into abyss and there are spirits that are caught in the wall of the abyss and it's so vast but I can see it and this one being is like hey you're not supposed to be here. And I was like, I'm just visiting. And he was like, okay, that's cool. So he just lets me go about. 
And I was like, okay, as long as you know I'm not supposed to be here. So. Like down here, I'll show you around. <laughs> <laughs> right. so, so I see where like these the people who torture themselves, who who create this hell for themselves, go like this collective energy. And uh, when I when I come out of that dimension, then I start seeing like this war happening, and I start seeing us going into Iraq, and it was crazy. I'm like, why are we over here fighting a war and in Iraq. And then 9-11 happened the next plasma, the next day. My mind was blown. I was like, I had told three people about that. I was like, that's the building. They were like, what? How did you see that? How did you know? Like, are you a, are you a prophet? Are you like Edgar Casey? I was like, I don't know. I don't know how I know this stuff. I was like, is the government at that time? I was like, is the government going to come and get me? Because they know I'm fighting. I was like, I was like, don't they do that? Don't they come snatch us up? So... You know, I'm still living in these limited beliefs, like, oh, they're going to come get me and all this other stuff. So, uh. I mean, but the thing is, is that, I mean, for you to go, I mean, that's, that's traumatic for many people to have to go through that. I mean, I would imagine, especially if you don't have somebody to talk it through or, um, and and you just tell the wrong person, then you end up in in a, a special hospital. That is a very valid point, which is exactly why we created the spiritual circle called Cosmic Convos. Yes, so <laughs> so help... people can have that space to feel <laughs> safe, safe place to, to talk to... about the things that's happened to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I mean, I had experiences when. I was young as well. And I knew I couldn't say a thing. And I just kept it to myself. And, um, and it wasn't until, you know, I heard about Shirley McLean, um, at some point I'm like, Oh, so people are having experiences like that. I'm not just the only one. Um, and so, yeah, and I suppose there was a lot of other things that, um, uh, going back and allow myself to revisit some of those things that I just kind of put down, um, because I, there was no, there was no discussing that there was nobody in my life to explain things. And, um, but now I, I welcome them, you know, um, and I, I I wish I had more sometimes. So, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, but that, you know, to come through all of that, um, you know, and, and have a, a well-balanced, um, life and, and mental and physical and spiritual balance, um, mm-hmm. and be able to help others through that because it, it has to be a very, confusing and bewildering um experience because reality like the real reality is way beyond our most people's imagination Mm -hmm. and you know because we're just right here uh you know with blinders on right with permanent blinders on um and anything outside of that is scary Yes. And they don't want to look. Um, and if they do get a peek of it, then they're like, oh, something's wrong with me. Um, or that's, um, you know, it's it's evil or, you know. And and so it, I, I think that's great that you have a place where people can go, okay, this just happened to me and I need to know like what's going on. And I think now- um, so, I mean, I've always been fascinated with maybe having like a, an ayahuasca experience because I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but I want to, but I've read up a lot about it where, um, somebody was telling me that they, they have a study group study group that have volunteered to take ayahuasca intravenously for like a period of time so that they can map out the the whole realm. Well, I thought, boy, that's going to be a long, 
<laughs> I mean, you know, um, and I've had, you know, see where people have taken it 15 minutes and they said, how long have I been gone? And he goes, I thought I was gone 40 years, but they were only gone 15. Mm. So I would imagine that people who go through this naturally, I mean, without any enhancers, enhancers, <laughs> um, that you definitely think something's wrong. But um, I think that you knew uh, on a different level that this is a more natural state than something's wrong with you. At a young age, I, I did know that um, that this was real. I thought that it was more of a curse. So there were times where, now I wasn't one of those people that that was uh, that that gives into peer pressure. So like smoking cigarettes and none of that growing up that that never phased me. Uh, but I had a buddy that that smoked weed, mm -hmm. and um, I started that at a young age because it did help to like relieve that 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 negativity that that trauma from seeing these spirits and not knowing how to communicate know who to communicate that to because you know I only told like a few people around me and that's just a spiritual step that's not even including the the um sexual trauma from being molested at, at a young age or anything like that so you know I really focus on how deep does the trauma go how deep does this energy that's not serving you mm -hmm. stored inside every cell of your body release that like let that go so that you can be the best you and only you know what the best you is I know what like we were talking about earlier um I believe that the purpose of us being here on earth on this planet is a test in energy there is a balance in everything the yin and yang right there's positive and negative or high vibrational and low vibrational mm -hmm. energy and so and we create that with our consciousness you know but when we come into this earth there is tests and being that he has such a dynamic past life like akash like his his akash is like full of a lot of like spiritual activity ascension all these th crazy things he is like prime to be tested you know and mm -hmm. so we all have our own tests that we go through in this lifetime but it's up to you to choose which direction you're going to go mm -hmm. every step and every point of the way yeah that that's just fascinating and i think that this there's so many more people nowadays that are a little bit more open to hearing about these things because they're starting to feel them on a different level and wondering what more is there. This can't just be all there is to life, yeah. you know, yeah. that there's, you know, what's, what's the meaning? Why are we here? Uh, what's my purpose? Uh, why do I feel the way I do why do I do what I do um some people don't have an explanation and they want answers so it's and it's nice to know that that, that people now have a place to go to get those answers um you know, when you were younger you didn't have anybody to go get those answers and and so now the world is opening up a little bit more where we can offer that yes. to folks who just want to explore yeah in a safe place in a safe and accepting non -judge, non judgmental place because that is a, a you know when you're having these experiences you're afraid to say something to someone for fear that you'll be judged but um you know there's there's people like you that you're just like tell us you know we're not we're not going to judge you know that's it's so great that you say that because actually someone from our tribe just mentioned to me recently, like, you know, thank you for holding a safe space to where we can laugh, we can cry, we can be excited, we can feel vulnerable, we can share, because there are not a lot of places that offer that. Right, right. And and that's why, you know, like, with this podcast, I'm, I'm open to talk about anything, you know, nothing, <laughs> nothing is uh, 
off topic. <laughs> so, um, because I think it, it's good to understand, you know, when, what, what resides with you, what, what's in alignment with you and, and you don't have to believe everything, but you can take what feels good and, and discard the rest. But, um, you know, I, I like having this podcast as a safe space to at least explore, um, you know, things like that. So, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed having both of you. It has been <laughs> awesome. Um, I do want to ask you, um, do you have your favorite quotes? Do you have a favorite quote if you'd like to share? Yeah, this is, so my company is called Collective Consciousness. And this is the quote that we live by. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. We believe that the way to raise the vibration on the planet and the way to move forward in this life is not individually, it's together. It's as a collective. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, when you get together with like-minded individuals who are starting to feel the way we feel, when we get together, we're just giddy. You know, yeah. we're just so excited, just like, oh, you, me too, <laughs> you know, um, so, um, and, and that's what I want to have. I want everybody to have that feeling. I want everybody to have that connection with another human being. It's just so just next level, you know, because you see, it's namaste. You see the source and the other person. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So do both of you, uh, either collectively or, or separately have a happy hack? Happy hack. Sure. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure, so, um, my biggest thing is mindset. So when we all have that inner villain in our mind, right. Telling us what we cannot do, what we're not capable of, like to be fearful of that or to steer away from things that are going to help us grow and expand. So anytime you hear that little voice in your head, I usually do like the Mickey Mouse voice, like, oh boy, you know what I mean? And I, I create that voice in my head. Like, I love that. Oh, you're not good enough. <laughs> you're not good enough. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, and then like, really like pull that out. How crazy that sounds. Like whenever you're like, oh, I can't give that speech or I can't start a new business or I can't, I don't know, ask her to marry me or whatever it is. Just listen to that voice in your head as if it's a completely like fictional character and um, hear how crazy it sounds. Hear that how does, that is so, and then it makes you laugh and go, oh my gosh, like I was really right. scared. About oh, that's that. it's silly. Really I can totally do it, you know, mm -hmm. and then recreate a more empowering thought process or stream of thoughts in order to help you take action and move forward to whatever that fearful thing was. That is great. <laughs> that is like, that's, that's a new one. And that is, that's definitely, no, that's a powerful one. So <laughs> I'm going to use that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then if you want to take it a step further, because this is a voice that's in your head, like picture that this voice is in the back seat, but you're the driver. So you're the navigator. So it's like, Sit back and enjoy. I, I got this. You backseat driving? Yeah. You, it, it, <laughs> you can't know how to drive? Like, I got this. Put your seatbelt on. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> or get out. Don't make me pull this car over. Right. That one. That one. Right. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Oh, well, you both have been an absolute joy to talk to and so interesting. Um, there's just not enough time to go into everything that I have questions on. So we will have to do this again. <laughs> Next time I have to tell you guys about identity and how I became Riella. Okay. Yeah. So save that for next time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so tell the listeners what you guys have going on. How can they find you what kind of services, services you have, um, yeah just let it roll yeah so we have a healing retreat that's coming up in the beginning of may that we're really excited about in and this Georgia. is going to, yes and this is going to help spiritual entrepreneurs to balance every aspect of their life including their financial life 
so that they can navigate with the rhythm of the cosmos. So we're going to focus on mind, body, spirit, and integration. And we're going to teach you that million dollar routine. Nice. It's going to be a truly transformational experience. Absolutely. And of course, we mentioned this earlier, we have Cosmic Convos as well. This is a monthly subscription to where we meet every single Thursday. Um, we took a holiday break, so we'll be starting back January 5th. And every single Thursday we meet and we share cosmic connection and activity with the community. And we also give you spiritual rituals, guided meditations, and just an amazing vibe for like an hour and a half. <laughs> nice. And, um, lastly, website. Um, you can check us out at www.collectiveco.co. Okay. Great. I'll put that right in the right here at the bottom. Perfect. And then um, we have a free gift for you guys as well. All right. <laughs> um, so we created an ebook and we want to give it to you guys for free. It is the seven biggest mistakes people make after their spiritual awakening. So um, you can go to seven seven mistakes, seven, seven spiritual, spiritual mistakes.com. Mistakes. Yeah, seven spiritual I'll put that down here as well. The number seven. The number seven, the number seven. mistakes dot com. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Well, <laughs> how exciting! I, you know, I I want to dive into this too, and I I might even come down and and poke my head in and say hi because I'll be in Georgia too. So <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> definitely. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much, and I definitely will be staying in touch with you, and of course, and I thank you again for for joining me today, and I hope to see you again soon on the show. Absolutely. Yes, thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you for having me. This has been a blast, us. and I, I love the space that you have. The more space that we have like this, the more people are are going to come and and enjoy and be open to be themselves their own experiences absolutely yes yeah you. So thank you. You. yes <laughs> well, thank you thanks for listening to this episode of the create happy now podcast please be sure to subscribe and if you are watching on youtube hit that notification bell if you have a topic to suggest please leave a comment below catch the create happy now podcast on itunes google podcasts Podbean, Spotify, Audible, iHeartRadio, Player FM, Listen Notes, and Podchaser. Check out other YouTube videos on the Create Happy Now YouTube channel. And if you want more, check down below for resources, courses, and events, or go to www.createhappynow.com.